guys, it's Anne and welcome back to my channel. I know this is a long awaited video. Today I'm going to be painting this little tiny Louis Vuitton bag, but I figured I would film this a little bit differently and more in a chit chat style because I have been gone for like six months, I know. Um, and I just feel like these videos, when you're watching what I do, it is quite self-explanatory. Um, I will be listing all the supplies and paints that I use down below. All the paints I'm gonna be using are Angelus paints, great for all leather goods. A lot of people use them for shoes. Um, and I even had some pre-mixed uh, paints from a commission I did before so I'm glad I could still use them for this bag as well but again like I said grab some tea because this will be somewhat of a long video but I figured I should get on here and talk about where I have been okay you know how Rihanna says like where have you been yeah anyways <laughs> I've been gone for six months um and I think you know it's about that thing that shall not be named that we have all endured for the past year. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was coming off strong. I was super inspired. I was actually really happy because um, the homebody in me was just like, yes, like I have this excuse to stay at home. No one is gonna judge me and everyone's gonna be doing it with me and I have no excuse but to get to it and be motivated and be inspired. And I think that went well for a couple of months but then definitely halfway through it, I think I hit a wall. If you're a fellow creative like me, let me know if this happens to you but in times where I feel like I'm not exactly sure what to do for my next project, I try to go on like craft hunting um, journeys and I'll go to like Hobby Lobby, pick up like a couple of different things that I want to start and sometimes that could actually be the total opposite of what you need to do as a creative. And I say that because there was a point in time where I literally wanted to make jewelry, I wanted to make a rug, I wanted to redecorate my entire apartment. Like I had no idea what to do except everything. And obviously that's get, that gets really overwhelming and I just ended up having a lot of projects that were unfinished and it didn't really feed me in the way that I thought it would initially. Maybe it was because I was just yearning to do something different and find excitement. I definitely had cabin fever and I just needed some change in my day-to-day -day routine, you know? I think that there is a misconception that just being an artist, a freelance artist at that is some dream because you can kind of wake up and do whatever it is you want, but it can also be really daunting because when you're given so many options, so many projects and things to do, um, you have to find a certain structure that works for you. And I think that that was definitely a challenge, um, but a journey that I had during COVID. And especially when it came to YouTube, I didn't know what was interesting to post anymore. It seemed like I was just stuck at home. I didn't really have any more projects. And honestly, I filmed a lot of things, but nothing kind of carried through and obviously didn't make it to this YouTube channel. So I apologize for that. I do have a lot of footage that I know I can still make into videos. So be on the lookout for that. But that brings me to my next topic of being a content creator and being a social media artist, as I'd like to say. I always have a love and hate relationship when it comes to social media because if it wasn't for social media, I wouldn't be the freelance artist that I am today. I wouldn't have the platform or the audience who would actually notice my artwork. And for that, I am forever grateful uh, that you guys are interested in what I do and it's brought me customers all over the world at this point um, that, again, like allows me to literally do what I love. But at the same time, once social media came into the equation of the art world, it's definitely tainted us as artists, you know? It's not like we're making masterpieces every day, we are coming up with content. And something that I always said was like, I always want to create content around my life and don't create my life around content. And by that I just mean, I don't want 
to feel like a robot trying to work the algorithm. But a lot of days, I gotta be brutally honest, it feels like that. And I will say that I do kind of enjoy it a little bit, but at the same time, we all know that um, social media has harmful effects, especially when it comes to um, your mentality. And we're just kind of seeing things in a different light nowadays. And I feel like I went on a long enough spiel about social media and its effects on our mental health, but I just felt like it was worth mentioning just because especially I'm explaining why I've been gone for so long uh, because I'll always be transparent and vulnerable with you guys and saying like, I have those moments too. I think a lot of times I make it seem like I have everything figured out. I have this like master plan and routine and system going on, but it's only me behind the scenes. You know, I'm the editor. I am the filmer. I am the creator. I am the marketer. I'm the only one on my team and packaging orders and all that stuff. And just some days, I have, I literally have those days where I'm just like, Ugh, I don't want to do anything today. And I had to come to the realization that that was completely okay. I think a lot of times we think team no sleep and um, just, you know, never not working. And that is actually extremely unhealthy, you know. Even God had to rest on the seventh day of creating this earth. So... That in itself tells you that it is okay to relax. It is okay to take a day off because that is going to produce the greatness in you. You can't work with an empty engine. Uh, you can't pour from an empty cup, whatever it is that you wanna say, what ana whatever analogy you wanna use. But we have all experienced burnout. <laughs> and I'm trying my best to understand what it is that I have to do as a freelance artist in order to stay inspired, stay creative, but to also stay mentally sane. And so now I'm going to move into the Q&A portion of this video. I asked you guys on Instagram to literally ask me any question, whether it be life related or art related. And so I got a number of good questions. So the first one was, what is the story behind your artwork? And I started creating ever since I could remember. Um, I just had a very big interest in just drawing and just using my hands and like, I don't know, just playing around with different projects, whether I was making like a dollhouse out of cardboard and whatnot. But my aunt that lives in Indonesia actually brought up a very good point to me. She was talking to one of my younger cousins about why I started art and she was trying to tell me the story of like, you know, her telling my cousins and whatnot. And she said, you know, Anne actually started to create more artwork once her dad passed away. So my dad passed away when I was really young, when I was seven years old. And at that time I already showed an interest for art but she made a very good point. I started to hang out with my um, other aunt, um, <laughs> different than the one that was telling the story. And I was always at her house uh, painting with her and creating scrapbooks because that was what she liked to do. She liked to paint acrylic flowers and we made a scrapbook together for my dad. Um, we collected a lot of the things that we received from his funeral and a lot of the memorabilia that we had to put together just one nice scrapbook. And oddly enough, she took a very, what could have been traumatic experience to me as a child and made it something enjoyable by piecing together these memories that I would never forget. So I think I always had this love for art inside me, but it was definitely a source of peace for me when I was younger. Um, I And it still is today. A lot of times whenever I just feel like I'm getting very anxious or, um, you know, even just bored or whatever, or even mad, sometimes painting is what calms me down. Sometimes creating is what takes me out of the real world and allows me to create something more beautiful than what I may have been experiencing at the time. And then my next question was, what age did you start taking art seriously? 
So I have a number of different answers for that. I, again, as I said, like my love for art has always been there. But when I started to quote unquote take it seriously, um, you know, whenever I was in school, I was always taking different art classes. So I think at that time it was still very much a hobby. Even when I was in middle school, uh, I would just be drawing in class or drawing pictures for my friends, or like I said, maybe drawing something at home. But it wasn't until I got to high school that I started to really dive into realism a little bit more. Maybe I would say um, I was guided also a lot more in my art journey. Prior to that, I was kind of doing a lot of it on my own. And of course, practice makes perfect. And I definitely think the fact that I just kept trying to draw different things as I was younger, that it made me a better artist once I got older. But in high school, that was really when I started to do it. And then at that point, I kind of started to get like my first commissions. I would be doing things for family, friends, friends of friends. Um, but again, it wasn't at a very high volume because obviously I was in school. I was also an athlete. And with the little time that I did have, I would be creating for myself or for the very few commissions that I had. But eventually when I really, really started to take it seriously was when I was in college. So after changing my major to um, informatics with a cognate and graphic design, I was learning a new form of art and that was in the digital realm. And I'm still so happy that I finally like decided to make that change for myself because guys, before that I was pre-med and even though my grades were phenomenal, it wasn't in my heart. Um, but as I was studying in college, I also decided why not, you know, do some commissions on the side to make some extra money, you know? Don't want to be a broke college kid. You got to come up with as many hustles as you can. So again, I continued doing things for friends and friends of friends. And whenever there were any on-campus events, I would join as one of their featured artists. And after a while, once the word got around, more and more people were buying my art. And then social media kind of exploded at that point. You know, we already had social media, but... For creators, I think that was when it became possible to actually see how you could turn your artwork into an actual job. But another question that I tend to get a lot is how do I manage being a freelance artist? And you know, if there's another freelance artist out there who can help your girl out and give me the answers, then please direct me their way because I would never say that I have it all figured out at all. It's kind of like a thing that I just figure out day by day. What I'm trying to work on now is being a better business person because I think while you can be an amazing and very talented artist, nowadays you have to be a great business person, a great marketer, or you know, if you have the means, then hire one as well so that they could help you. But I can't say that I have the solution to some master equation on how to be a successful freelance artist. Uh, if I did, then I would have happily told you. <laughs> Although what I can tell you is, once you decide to sell your art, make sure that you know your worth and you don't settle for anything less. I think that you need to charge what you think is the correct amount and what is worth your time and your energy and your mastery because the last thing you want to do is overwork yourself as an artist and eventually get to the point where you don't want to do it at all. And that leads me to my next question. What's your least favorite thing about creating artwork? Over time, I realized it's commission work. I won't say that every commission piece um, is my least favorite. I definitely have some that I enjoy and that I genuinely like to create. However, a lot of times, I think that people are always in the search for art to have and um, they often just search for an artist, maybe not one that they actually admire or at least 
one that could fulfill what it is that they need. Hence, I get a lot of people who ask me for logos or if I could paint their family members. And while I very much can, and I know that I have the skill to do so, I, I'd have to say that it doesn't bring me much joy. So over time, I've had to be selective with what it is that I accept. I realize that an artist, even a social media artist and whatnot, <laughs> has to create different categories of art. You know, art that they can market and sell to people, art that they wouldn't mind doing for other people, you know, the ones that you wouldn't mind uh, doing as commission work. And then sometimes you have to keep certain art sacred. You know, I love to paint portraits, but that doesn't mean I like to paint portraits of strangers. I like to paint portraits of people that I look up to. Um, a lot of times it's music artists, um, my family members, people that are really close to me and that inspire me. Because even though someone might be paying you and you're so-called, I'm doing air quotes right now, doing what you love, there are certain jobs that you're not gonna like and jobs that take you longer, um, that make you feel more drained and at the end of creating it, it's almost like you're not proud of it or you wouldn't wanna attach your name to it. So over time I had to realize that saying no to some jobs is actually okay. I was actually watching a documentary on Netflix quite a while ago and they were featuring a bunch of artists. I believe it was called Abstract, the series. Um, and one of the artists actually said, you become a more valuable artist the more you say no. And that really stuck with me. No matter what it is that you do in life, Everyone isn't granted the access to have you, especially when it comes to your work and what you create and what you love, your passion. You shouldn't allow everyone into your space. And that's something that I'm just learning time and time again, to stay true to you and do what makes you happy. Now, of course, you're going to have those days where you have to do packaging or, you know, answering emails, the business stuff, the things that are not so fun, but as long as it is going towards your end goal. You know what I mean? But I hope you guys liked this video and I hope you enjoyed painting this bag with me. If you guys like it and like how it turned out, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below what you thought as well as what you guys might want me to talk about next time because you know, your girl's just trying new things. <laughs> but if you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we want you here for a long time and not just a good time. Okay, honey? <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.